it is rich. And let me just move some stuff out of the way. Yeah, I'm doing it, uh, doing my lives in this direction now. Because I think it'll work better as far as quality and you aren't getting a bunch of like extra space all off to the side. I think this will really work out better. You guys will enjoy it more. Just turn down use it a little bit. Boom. And uh, welcome back to the studio. And let me just start off by saying um, fuck AI art. I am so sick of having this conversation everywhere. Online. Everywhere. It is insane. And here's what it's coming down to. I have a very bleak outlook for the future for artists. Um, artificial intelligence is terrible. Um, that includes like chat GPT and pretty much every artificial intelligence. I don't. It could all go away and I would be minorly um, annoyed. Okay. Um, this is just insane. Especially when I'm seeing... I'm getting comments from people on Instagram saying, uh, you know, oh, didn't know it was AI, but I don't really care either. And that is the most uh, bothersome thing to me. Like, you, modern, the, the majority of the public don't give a shit, as long as it looks cool. And uh, they get it quick and easy. Um, it is McDonald's or Burger King. Um, people will find out later on just how unhealthy and damaging it is to them and to society as a whole. But right now, they don't care. They see that quick fast food line, and look, there's there's something there. You know, it's not it's not quality. As a matter of fact, it's not even real beef that they're putting in there. It's fake. It's genetically modified, and that's what AI is. It's not real meat. Go to a real a real restaurant. Order a burger. If you can't ask for a cheeseburger and they don't ask you, how do you want that cooked? Don't order, don't get it. It's not good for you. It's not good for anybody. It's not real meat. Okay? Um, go to a restaurant or get your own. Make it. You'll enjoy it more. It'll be better for you. It'll taste better. Everything. You're, you'll be sacrificing nothing except for a little bit more money. And that might not even necessarily be true in all cases. Depends on what store you go to, what brand of beef you get. So, let me uh, check out, make sure I'm staying on the panel. I think so. And then I was just watching um, Aaron Blaze. I don't want to, you know start some stupid beef or anything like that. He he's, doesn't even know I'm fucking here. But I really disagree with him. He just had, came out with a video said, why AI will not be taking your animation job. Um, and then he also says pretty quickly, not yet. So it, it will be taking your animation job. Um, yeah. Yeah, not everybody's going to go away, but there's going to be a lot of people eliminated. There'll be just a few creatives working on every show and every animated movie. Um, we'll just have like an art director who inputs, you know, all the text into Mid Journey or whatever AI thing. And that will come the images. And if it's not quite right, he'll, you know, either readjust the prompt or he will just fix it in Photoshop. A lot of artists will be gone. It's really going to speed things up. But at what cost? What cost of quality, of, you know, of life? Try taking art away from an artist, you know? And it, people keep saying, we're not trying to tell you to stop making art. We're just, you know, making a program that does it better. And it's like, well, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to have a lot of struggling creatives, mentally struggling. At a time when mental health is so important to people, they just really don't give a fuck when it comes to, to art and this whole AI conversation at all. Why would you automate this? It's like one of the few fields that people have to be really driven and passionate about. 
and love to do. You're like, that's the one. Single that one out. We don't need that. There's a lot of people out there doing jobs that they hate and would not mind not doing. And nobody's working on those? Like, come on. That's weird to me. All right, so what am I working on today? I'm working on some anime, dynamic anime, manga anatomy. So, um, today I'm looking at this art book that I got recently, uh, Gadgetry by Shiro Miwa. And it is fantastic. Um, I hadn't heard of them before this book. And flipping through it, I realized that I've watched several shows with concept designs by them. Um, like Joker Game, which I really liked. And, uh, geez, what was it? That's it, it's Dragon, where is it? There's another one. Alex, Supercell, yep. Oh, there's another one, where was it? Yeah, this one, Kiss Neighbor. Kiss Neighbor. Um, I don't think I finished the show, but the character designs and everything stuck out to me so much at the time. And I had no idea who did them. This thing came out probably 10 years ago, maybe. It's ridiculous how fast time has gone by, but. Yeah. Sorry, let me just pull up my live stream over here on my other monitor and follow along, see what's going on. Sorry, just give me a second, pulling stuff up. Got my uh, freaking Frazetta mug, and I love this thing. Just ran out of coffee, there it goes, but love that thing. I don't know why this is taking so long. Sorry, most boring stream right now. Isn't that per usual though? In the beginning of every stream, it's like they're getting set up. There's always some sort of technical issues. Talking about random crap. All right, set up. Fantastic. All right, so I've been trying to sketch the last couple of days and I couldn't do it. I have no idea why. Let's talk about my uh, artist block, I guess. Over the last couple days. No idea what's going on with me. Matter of fact, I came down to the studio trying to draw. I, I couldn't even figure out what I wanted to watch, what I wanted to listen to. You know, I, I usually have something going on in the background. Um, I was like, well, I want to watch an anime. I was looking at the anime. I was like, I don't want to watch any of this stuff. There's new stuff that I want to watch, but in order for me to watch, I actually have to watch. I, I don't usually like drawing while watching something new, especially if it's subtitles, can't do that. Um, so I had no idea what to watch. And I was like, and watch an old show? I couldn't, couldn't find anything. I was in a weird mood. So I was like, I'll listen to some. What do I listen to? What music? I couldn't think of any music. It was like a podcast? No, nothing. I have no idea. And I just sat here staring at the paper. No idea what to draw. Totally uninspired. Totally didn't want to do anything. I feel like uh, it was weird. I don't know. One of the weirdest moods I've ever been in. But what what can you do when something like that happens? So here we are.
yeah, sorry, don't want this to be like a rant against AI you know, art, but uh, it's going to be. <laughs> makes me so mad. Yeah, so Aaron Blaze said, uh, you know, I won't be taking my job. And he said something very specific about how it AI, uh, it takes a human to impart emotion into a character as an animator. This is what he's talking about. Um, and I agree. I agree. It does take a human to impart emotion into a character. Um, but AI doesn't learn. It just replicates. It's going to scour everything out there on the internet, and it's going to just copy it. Um, I think it's going to replace a lot of animators, and it's going to replace them faster than it thinks. Just like I thought, you know, art would be the last thing AI would replace, and it's like one of the first things. I thought for sure first would be like, you know, some sort of self-driving cars, taxi cabs would be replaced, Uber, you know, all those people would be uh, out of a job, that's what I thought. I thought that would be like the first thing to go. And no, it's, it's artists. I was like, that. it's one thing people actually want to do, and it's creative. You can't, AI can't be creative, but the person coming up with the ideas can type it into the little uh, Google machine and out pops images. So that's all it's going to take. Um, Aaron, if, if you see this at all, that it's just going to be the art director typing in the emotion that he wants to appear on, you know, the little polar bear's face and the machine's going to go sad. Okay. And he's going to give it a little frowny face and he's going to use, you know, oh, this is the color palette that usually appears with sad images. This will make it look a little bit sadder and it's going to do that. It's going to pop out a few options for the art director. Our director's going to go no to that one, no to that one. That one's a little better. It's going to click on it and go, yeah, just make it a little bluer. And out, out, go, out comes the animation. It's going to be ridiculous. Especially with big companies like Disney and Pixar. <laughs> Dude, they're going to create their own, their own AI engines. It's going to be stupid how fast this happens. Disney doesn't actually care about people. They'll come up with their own AI. That means uh, lower overhead and saving money and people don't care about quality anymore and Disney's basically the Walmart of animation <laughs> it's not to say that Disney animation is bad but size wise and mass appeal that that's what's going to happen it's going to happen real quick I think uh, I think animators got about five years five years at Disney I don't want to be too down about it because I love hand-drawn animation. I love it more than uh, than 3D, Pixar, and all that. Um, even though that's that's all great too, um, it's just not as great to me as traditional animation. I prefer the hand-drawn stuff. Especially uh, when it comes to old Disney movies and anime. That's all it's going to take. I think five years and uh, you're done. I think it'll be even easier with uh, special effects in um, live movies. Just have a CG machine that just fills in the gaps. I don't know what I'm doing with that nose, that's crazy. I don't think it's all bad news. Um, just like anything else, you know, there's fast food, but there's still restaurants. There are still people who appreciate a good steak dinner. There will be opportunity. There will be 
opportunity. And uh, here's the thing, the AI will devalue art. Everybody will have a lower um, value of art. That's the problem with AI. The more readily available something is, the less valuable it is. Scarcity. It's going to make it so commonplace that people will not have any understanding of how long it took artists to actually learn how to do um, how to do what they do. I mean, people already see it as like a party trick, like, oh, you can doodle? Oh, you can draw? Uh, will you draw my dog? You know, that's what, that's what you get. Anytime you go to a party or anything, it's like, oh, draw my dog. No, no, go away. Or, oh, I really want a tattoo. You draw me this uh, thing? And I'm like, no. Hey, what's up, sideburns? Welcome to the stream. Hell yeah, draw along. I'm just over here ranting about AI art, so. think about AI art um, some you're excited about not excited about I am particularly pessimistic about the whole AI art development people keep on trying to argue with me on Instagram about it too I'm like no it's a bad bad thing AI art is theft Especially when you find out how the businesses behind it actually operate and get away with it. It's, it's total theft. So, Sideburns, here's what I'm doing tonight. I'm studying uh, Shiro Miwa, his art book called Gadgetry, and uh, it's pretty cool. Lots of sketches in here, concept art for anime and video games. And uh, this guy's pretty cool. I actually just found out he has a YouTube channel. So, check him out too. He does primarily uh, Photoshop drawing, Procreate, that kind of stuff. He doesn't post a lot, but he's got, got a decent amount of videos up. So I just needed a drink.
Zatanna. Awesome. Yeah, she's an awesome character. I like her designs. Um, let me see what I got here. I got an awesome art book. I don't know if you recognize this so far. This is Adam Hughes' Cover Girls art book. And he does fantastic women. Let's see if I can find this. This book is amazing. It's um, not all of his covers for DC, but most of them. I think there's actually like a rule. There's a legal thing. You can only do so many. A certain portion of his professional stuff for DC can be printed in his own art book. Which begs the question. This might actually be printed by DC. So this might be most of his covers for DC Comics. A lot of Catwoman, Wonder Woman. Justice League stuff. Yeah. Um, he's fantastic. There's the Tana. But no. Yeah. And then on the other side, has like a couple paragraphs from him and then different phases of the cover. So over here we got like an initial sketch then like color prelim the inks anyway awesome book always end up pulling out uh, books from my stash during my streams so I've got a lot of books a lot a lot of books Oh no, not a commercial. This is ridiculous. I just want some commercial free music. I'll never be able to find it though. Commercial free and copyright free. Never gonna happen. So, here's another page of sketches I've been working on. some sort of a older sci-fi character concept art here. And I need to work on my perspective. My perspective is not that great. Um, now I guess it's okay, but it's hard to work on. You know, it's like the thing you're least interested in, hardest to work on. And when I do uh, perspective lines, most of the time I don't use a ruler. Um, I've talked about this before in other other streams, but Brian Stelfree is an amazing artist. Um, at a convention, taught me you know don't use the ruler so much. Uh, the straight lines don't help. It doesn't look natural, and that's because in, in nature, naturally very few straight lines even architecturally on buildings it's very unlikely that there's a straight line ever in nature or in the real world not to mention perspective i mean the earth is curving so even when you get really far out line not everything's going to line up so he says he doesn't even use a ruler he just uh you know, for the prelim sketch, you might use a ruler just to make sure everything's, you know, lined up. But on the final drawing, no ruler. He just tries to make it as straight as possible. So, 
little notes you learn uh, while at conventions talking to real artists. Oh, yeah. Let me pull out his uh, sketchbook over here. Brian Stillfries, this guy's awesome. He's been working in comics forever, too. Watercolor Master. Show you Celine. Yeah. This guy I'm getting notes from. Definitely a guy you want to listen to. He worked in the same studio with Adam Hughes for a long time, and he actually taught Adam Hughes how to color. Well, paint, I guess. Well, Adam Hughes just colors. I don't think Adam Hughes would even be offended by that because he's said many times in his own interviews. Um, he paints with, like, an old version of Photoshop and a mouse. He doesn't use a, a tablet. He uses a mouse and just does selections and fills with gradients and whatever... He does a bunch of small selections, large selections. It, no, he's not like really painting, but everything he knows about painting and color he learned from Brian. So, man, I wish I could get watercolors like that. That's insane. Looking at that cheetah, just magnificent. All right. But anyway, Brian Stillfries. too much. I need to just draw.
How's it going? Welcome to uh, the studio. And let me know what you guys uh, think. Any questions you guys might have. Earlier I was talking about artificial uh, artificial intelligence art. So, <clears throat> in case that's something you guys want to talk about. or Yada, 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 yada. Sideburns, how do you go about putting shadows or shading to the face? How do I go about it? Um, well, you gotta know your, uh, your light source, what direction it's coming from, so. Um, aside from that, do you mean like hatching versus Shading or putting shadows. Well, I guess how do you go about putting shadows or shading to the face? I prefer to hatch. Um, I do hatching and cross hatching. I'm a big Frank Frazetta fan, Bernie Wrightson. Um, so this is hatching um, that I just did here on the underside of the nose and lip. Um, I don't like doing the soft shading. I don't know why. Well, probably because, you know, a lot of my art, in, art influences are uh, comics and, and manga. So it's primarily black or white with few, you know, gray tones. Manga has gray tones, but yeah, Bernie Wrightson's uh, um, Frank, God, Frankenstein is amazing. All those illustrations are awesome. And he's one of the few artists that I really love and admire. And I don't have any books of his. Um, well, I've got like three Frank Frazetta books. So now that I've got a light source on this guy, basically a uh, top down. Um, you know what, I'm actually going to add. 
some here. Wrap them around over there. Right here. This is actually going to be like um, some sort of chain mail on his arm. I don't know who this character is. I'm just making it up. So As he's reaching back and grabbing the sword. There's going to be some shaving here. What I'm actually going to do is add like a core shadow. I'm going to have some reflective light on your side. shadow from his arm. Sideburns, how do you like to render uh, lighting? sketching a lot of a lot of line work and then go back and erase and uh, clean it up
Oh my god. Are you All right, I'm going to end the stream here. Thanks for uh, joining me in the studio. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the draw along and have a good night.